Hi, uh, this is Tom from Nightingale Games talking about War Room, a Larry Harris game. And today we're talking about uh, the last phase, production. So, uh, I'm going to be using the British as an example here. So after all your orders are written, and you've moved and resolved combat, and resolved the morale phase, and uh, you're finally on to the last phase of production, you'll go to this other side of the operations and production chart, and you'll be looking at your uh, resources over here, oil, iron, and OSR, in uh, the red, blue, and yellow. And you'll be spending those resources to purchase new units. Uh, first of all, you'll write uh, how many resources of each type you have at the top here. So if I have four, seven, and eight, I'll be I'll write that amount. And in the global scenario, you're allowed to trade. In the smaller scenarios, there is no trading. But you could trade two oil for five OSR or vice versa if, um, if you uh, were allowed to do that, depending on your adjacency and controls. Uh, I'm not going to go into trading right now. Uh, and then you'll write, after the results of trading, you'll write the new totals here. And then in secret, you will decide what you want to purchase. So you'll write uh, for each unit type how many you want. So here they want to purchase uh, one infantry, one artillery, one fighter, and one submarine. And you'll write out the costs. Each of these dots represents a resource of that type. Um, so, for example, an infantry costs two OSR, so you write two for... And uh, one artillery costs one iron and two OSR, and so on, until you tally all this up, and then write the totals down here and then subtract the totals from the top of below. So they're left with one oil, three iron, and two OSR after making all of their purchases. And uh, in turn order, they'll reveal their purchases and take them from the supply. So here I've already made a little stack. And they'll decide uh, where they'll want to put them. So I'll just... Uh, They'll be deducting the resources over here. These are placeholder pieces right now. They'll actually be more peg-like and chunkier to fit into these slots. Uh, but you would uh, move down your peg to your new totals here. So I would move this down like so to one to match the remaining oil over here. Uh, and then in turn order, you'll be placing these on the world map at industry centers. So let's say this is the British, for example. They've taken all this out of the supply and according to what they've, they've built. So one infantry, one artillery, one fighter, and one sub. Here we go. And... Uh, Let's say they're playing the Pacific scenario, so they don't need to worry about um, UK's other possessions up there. And they just want to build in India. And so you can see that India has five smokestacks here, which also matches the uh, strategic value here, five. And that limits how many units can be produced in that territory. Let's look over here. To Eastern Australia, you can see they only have three smokestacks, so only three new units can be built there per round. So uh, let's we'll put these out into India. They want to produce these four things here, and that is less than the limit, and they'll cap it off with. An industry token here to show that it's being uh, it's being manufactured and you'll notice that this is a rare case where you can actually have units of different types in the same stack so we have a naval unit an air unit and land units all in the same stack and it's um, that's okay until they're actually usable 
Uh, and so they have to wait. Um, after putting that out, everyone puts those out in turn, and then they have to wait until the following round during the refit and deploy phase just after combat before they can uh, be used and go under our command stack. So let's pretend that uh, the production phase is done and they've done a whole nother round of combat. This has been prone to bombing, so these could have been bombed, but they fortunately escaped. And now they it's the following round during the refit and deploy phase, and they are deploying in turn order. And so they can either combine with an existing stack as long as it doesn't uh, break the limit. So we've got six here, uh, and that's just enough because the stacking limit is eight. So we'll add these to this stack such that now it's at its maximum of eight units. And then we would put this new fighter out under a new command, and the new ship would be deployed where there's a port. Uh, India happens to have two ports, one in I-10 and one in I-1, so it will choose I-1 and combine this new submarine with its existing fleet of the fifth here uh, in the Indian Ocean. Um, so that is how, uh, and then the following round, they'd get to move as normal, and um, you will remove this. So uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, con some raids, some convoy raids and bombing raids, strategic bombing raids. First, convoy raids. So there are two types. There's coastal raids, as shown by these convoy ships here, or here in little circles connected to, linked to a port. And then there are trans-ocean raids, which uh, you can see in the Atlantic Ocean over here. Uh, let me just move this stuff out of the way. And you can see, uh, for example, we have some uh, convoys, trans-ocean convoys crossing the Atlantic, which aren't linked to a particular territory, but um, by a line, but they are uh, by name. So this is the Eastern U.S. going to Great Britain. And this shows who will be penalized if they suffer uh, losses. So, uh, as normal, you will place a, if there is a raid in any particular territory, you will place a hotspot there, and uh, there would be an enemy ship present, and per enemy ship present, um, let, let's say the British are uh, raiding the Japanese over here, Zoop. over off uh, Borneo here, and there's multiple targets here, there's three targets. And so you'll be rolling three dice, one die per naval or air unit. So if there was an air unit over here as well, they'd be rolling dice. So we'd be rolling four dice in batches of 10. And so I rolled, let's see what I rolled. A red, blue, yellow, and green. So the die results match the results of the ship. And so they'd lose one yellow OSR, one blue iron, and uh, one red oil. But it looks like there's no iron to be lost here. Um, and they can't lose more than what's shown in the region. Uh, so the other thing I quickly wanted to talk about was uh, strategic bombing raids, uh, which happens during normal combat with bombers. And uh, they'll be rolling dice, and if they roll a black, they'll hit the infrastructure, which is the, affects the ports and rails and the industry. And they would put down a bomb token, and this bomb token subtracts 
one number from the strategic value for in terms of production limits. So they would have only been able to produce four things. So imagine one of these smokestacks is gone for every bomb token that occurs there. And these can't be removed uh, during the game or repaired. It's uh, They've been bombed more, it's not just a single bombing, it's a major lasting bombing campaign um, that is very, it goes beyond being able to repair. Uh, so then the rail would no longer be usable. And uh, as I said before, if there were two there, now they would only be able to build three things in that particular territory. If they wanted to, if they rolled a color, such as uh, three, uh, yellow or red or blue, um, and that region also produced that color, so these red and blues would be misses, but this yellow would dock uh, the British and OSR if they were bombed uh, up to the maximum that they produced, so they couldn't take more than two hits uh, in a round. Um, so that's a really quick overview um, of bombing raids, convoy raids, and production. Um, there's one other thing. If there were units under production here, you could destroy them instead of choosing to bomb a resource. So if I had a, a yellow hit, I could choose to take out uh, this infantry instead of a resource. So they're very vulnerable. The units that are under production are very vulnerable. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks.